So I'm on my way out from my lunch at the Susie Lake spot that I had there. And uh, don't ask me how I missed this on the way in. I guess I must have been looking at my feet. Hopefully you can see this on the tree. Brand new, fresh birch polypores. Usually when I come across them, they're already dead and gone, but oh yeah, these are nice and soft. No bugs haven't gotten to them yet. We're going to explore the medicinal use of these and other use, also referred to sometimes as the razor straw fungus. Can be used as a, a band aid, the soft underside that is. Yeah, we're going to collect one or two of these, take them home, and we'll do a little show and tell on them. Okay, so we're back home now, and I have the birch polypore mushrooms that I collected at Susie's Lake. It's actually been a few days since I was out in Susie's Lake. I wanted to go back and do a little bit more research, just confirm what I already knew before sharing that with you. And that brings up a very good point, a place where we need to start. If you're going to go into the woods and you're going to collect plants of any type, be they mushrooms or otherwise, and you're going to consume them either as food or as a medicinal, you have to do the research first. Please do not take my word for this, that these are of value to you. You have to do your own research. Having said that, uh, this is a great plant to look at, and we're going to set up on the countertop right now to have a closer look and talk a little bit about what their uses are and how we can uh, use them. All right. Birch polypore. Latin name, Pictoporus betulinus. The birch polypore derives its name from two things. One, it grows on birch trees, dead birch trees, hence the name Betulinus, and it's a polypore, which means that it has a numerous small pores on its underside where the spore is kept and eventually released uh, so that it can regenerate on other birch trees or on that same birch tree. So that's where it derives its name. Now these are some relatively small examples. You can see how they just barely larger than the palm of my hand. And of course the other one I have here is uh, considerably smaller. Um, but they're still quite fresh. Now it's been a few days since I did take these off the birch tree out in Susie's Lake. But you can see that they're still quite soft. And that's one of the things to look for when you're, uh, if you locate some of these and you're going to decide whether or not you want to harvest them. Probably the primary thing though is whether or not the bugs have gotten at them. And more often than not, when I do find them in the woods, you can see holes all through the bottom side or where it's completely blackened on the bottom side and you know that the spore has been released. Uh, they're pretty much spent at that point and uh, not, not of much value to you. But in this state, these are not brand new uh, they're, they're a little older, but they're still in very good, usable shape. Now, there is edible value in each of these birch polypore. Uh, however, I haven't eaten them, but I have had the tea made from these, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And I know that the tea can be kind of bitter. If you choose to try the tea, you may want to have some sweetener at hand, sweetener of your choice, to make it more palatable. But it's the medicinal value and other properties of the birch polypore that we're going to discuss today. So medicinally, it may not be as much of a rock star in the bushcraft world as Inonotus obliquus, or the famous chaga mushroom, but nonetheless it shares many of the same medicinal characteristics that make it uh, worth looking at. Uh, in ancient times, well, ancient times, years ago, these were consumed as a tea for cleaning out the parasitic worms that infected a lot of our ancestors' uh, stomachs and intestine. It could also be used as a laxative when taken in fair quantity. Uh, it is today, though, still used for a couple of things. One, it has been reported that it will soothe the nerves and eliminate fatigue. But more importantly, and probably the single best reason for using this as a medicinal, is for the moon boosting characteristics that it has. Now let's just uh, clarify, immune, immune boosting does not necessi necessarily mean that it will boost your immune system and fight off a cold or, or any infections that you may have. What it does mean is that it will modulate 
immune system so that the immune system is able to better handle any infections that come into the body. Uh, having an overboosted immune system can be as bad for you as having an underboosted uh, or underperforming immune system. So that makes this kind of a unique medicinal in that it will selectively raise or lower, if necessary, your immune system to best accommodate uh, any medicinal or medical issues you may be uh, taking it for. It has an antiseptic property and as a result it can be used, the internal parts, which I'll show you soon, can be used as a band-aid directly over a cut or a scrape. It is anti-inflammatory, so it can reduce pain, especially in joints. And it has antiviral uh, capabilities. So, and there is a report that I read that says it has uh, antibiotic capabilities for bacterial infections as well. So there is a lot of research available for you if you look for it on the internet or in uh, uh, the available written material. But uh, we're going to take a second now just to open one of these up and we'll talk about how it can be used first off as a band-aid. Um, we'll also talk about how it can be used as a strop for your knife. Although realistically these are probably a little bit small for doing that, still uh, it's something that I will show you. Okay, let's try opening one of these up, show you how what it looks like on the inside. A little bit of resistance to it, but still quite fresh, so you can still see that it's cutting quite easily. Now you can see it's a very flexible, very clean looking material. And it's this portion of the birch polypore that allows it to be used as a band-aid. Now, in a larger one or a fresher one, you may be able to take a scraping right off of the bottom, and I'll attempt to do that on the other uh, example that I have here, but even with this uh, through slice that I have, if you had a cut, say on your finger, or on the back of your hand, this could be applied directly to it. It has some stretch value. Uh, now it's going to require that uh, you have something else to wrap around it, be it a piece of cloth or I suppose you could uh, even use a piece of duct tape. But uh, there is even reports that cuts that have had the birch polypore applied to it not only heal faster, but ha that they'll heal without scar. Now I don't know that to be true. That's simply a report that I have read in some of the materials. Um, I ha don't use these as band-aids because more often than not, uh, it's not something I have with me when I sustain a cut. So if I do happen to have it, well, certainly I'll give it a try. But uh, I'd sooner reach into my pocket and grab a band-aid for something I have immediately on me. So that's what it looks like. Still quite fresh, still quite nice. Now, another use for the inside of the birch polypore, as I mentioned earlier, is as a strop for your knife. Now, it's not ready to use in this case, but this can be dried out and it will become like a leather or like a suede, if you will. It'll have a soft texture on the top and especially if you're able to get a piece off of a, a larger specimen, you can use this as a strop for your knife. That is if you don't have one with you. And work it back and forth. And it will be quite effective at maintaining the edge. Of course, it won't take a dull edge to sharp, but it will maintain the razor sharpness of an already sharpened knife. Now the nice thing about this is cutting it in small pieces like this, it can be dried and kept and it will not lose much of any of its medicinal value. So rather than see this thing go to waste, what we'll do is we're going to slice it up and keep it in small pieces like this. Um, it can be kept for quite a long time and still be usable. So this is also the way you want to cut it if you're going to use it for making tea. So that you have a piece that you uh, can put in the pot and slimmer slowly, and we'll talk about that in a second. Interesting fact, Otsi the Iceman is reported to have had a piece of birch polypore on a leather thong around his neck. Now whether he kept it as a charm, whether he kept it as a medicinal, whether he kept it for uh, coal burning or fire lighting, uh, that's unknown. All of those have been proposed and maybe he used it for all of those. But this is something that has been around for a long time and recognized for its value both as a, both as a medicinal as well as a, a practical use of say band-aids or sharpening, or not sharpening so much as maintaining the edge on a sharp knife. Alright, I'm going to cut the rest of these up and uh, we're going to use one of these to, to um, 
make some tea from and the rest I'm going to dry out for myself. Before I do that though, I am going to attempt to see if I can remove a piece from the bottom of the larger of the two specimens here so that it could be used as a band-aid directly. I suspect it's maybe a little old, but let's give it a try. So what I might do is take my knife, score line, score parallel line, connect those two. Now it's getting underneath the edge of this. That can be a bit tricky, but if you can get it un get under the edge, you can usually get it started. Yeah, this might be a little old. Let's give it a try here. Yeah, I think it might be too old. Yeah, I'm having some success. There we go. All right, so this is fresh, clean, sterile, antiseptic properties, antibacterial properties, antiviral properties. This is pretty much nature's best uh, first aid thing that you can use for small cuts right here. It's not one of the plants like yarrow that can be used for stopping bleeding, but if you have a cut where the bleeding has stopped and you've washed it out and you want to ensure that it remains clean, sealed off from external infection, and at the same time, uh, apply some antibacterial antiviral properties to the cut, this is the material you want. Now this is a rather small piece, so if you have a larger piece and you can go to the full circumference of your finger, it's got a neat quality where it will actually stick to yourself. And you see that's not the case here. But uh, there, that would make a good band-aid and of course you'd have to have something else to hold it on, a bandage of some type. Alright, I'm going to cut the rest of this up and prepare it for making some tea. Okay, so we have the birch polypore in water, it's simmering away. It will take a little while for this to fully extract, or at least extract as much as reasonably can by with the water method. Uh, you can also use a tincture method for extracting some of the medicinal. And what I mean by that is uh, it can be placed in uh, your favorite al alcoholic beverage of choice and left to sit, and the alcohol will, will bring out some of the medicinal qualities as well. In fact, what you could do is uh, simmer this down for a while. Now what I'd like to do is actually wait for it to decoct to about half the liquid that's in it now on a slow simmer. But you could, after you have done that, use the uh, remaining birch polypore, place it in some white rum, vodka, whatever your choice is, and then let it sit. Then return the, the water and the, or the tea and the, and the, and the tincture together and you can create a, a uh, very effective, although alcohol-based, uh, medicinal for, and be kept that way for later use. So this is going to take a while before it does simmer down to where I want it to get. It uh, is gaining, gaining a light amber color. It won't get as dark as, say, chaga tea, where, where you know if you've made a chaga tea, it, it can almost be black. It's so, so dark a brown. Uh, what I smell right now is really quite nice. It's a mushroomy smell, so if you like cooking mushrooms, uh, you're going to like the smell of this as well. So, uh, there we have it. Our tea is on, and uh, we'll enjoy that in a little while. The birch polypore, an excellent medicinal, quite readily available as well, at least around my area of Nova Scotia. Uh, this is much easier to find than is the chaga mushroom. Still, if you're going to go out to the woods and harvest the birch polypore, be responsible about it. Take a small portion off of any tree. Now, the tree that I found in, in the Susie Lake area had probably eight or ten of the mushrooms on it. I took two. I wanted to uh, leave some behind to ensure that there would be some for the future. One of the other nice things about collecting the birch polypore is that it's uh, available this time of the year before it gets too cold or too much snow to travel through the woods. It also grows quite quickly, especially compared to chaga. So uh, when you take some from a tree, there's a good chance that when you come back the next year, you'll find a new crop of the birch polypore on the same tree. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more, then please subscribe. Also, hit the like button and leave comments below. See you soon.